Ever wanted to know how to go beyond the EWM standard? In this series of videos, we'll show you the tools and tricks to enhance your EWM. Hello, welcome all to a new video of our series Enhance SAP EWM. My name is Hendrik. Most of you know me already. I created the website wmexperts.online, which is a platform for knowledge transfer. I post blog entries there on a regular basis and also upload videos, which are all about transferring knowledge and experience in the area of SAP EWM. The video today is about enhancing SAP EWM and in particular enhancing the quant determination uh, during stock removal. Uh, so the quant in this sense, the, the source bin or HU from which you are going to pick against a specific warehouse request. In terms of agenda, we will start looking at the standard options. Uh, uh, that means the customizing options, all the configuration possibilities that you have without touching the code. And once we've done this, we will have a look at the, the body, uh, which is usually being used in order to enhance the strategy here. That does not mean that that's the only body which could help here. But we will look at the ones which, at least based on my experience, is most frequently being used when somebody wants to change the logic which decides about the quants which should be picked, uh, which should be the, the source for the creation of a warehouse task against a warehouse request. As I said, we start with the customizing, which is already pretty powerful. I, and um, gave you the table here, which is holding the, the most important customizing settings and also the include where it's being determined. We will look at this now together. Behind this table, T334RR, removal rule, you will find the data which is customized in this customizing node here. And what you can do here actually is define a stock removal rule which you can then later assign to a, to a storage type or a storage type search sequence. And then based on your overall strategy, at some point you will find a, a storage type. You will either find a storage type search sequence based on the criteria which is available in customizing. We will not look at this in detail here now. And then you can define the, the removal rule either on the level of the storage type search sequence or in a second step on the level of the storage type, which is being determined based on the search sequence as such. So the most common, <coughs> commonly used field is probably the W day ATU. So this is a goods receipt date. And if you sort by this date, you're basically implementing a, a fee for or a leave for strategy. Yeah, so first in, first out. If you sort, if you sort descending based on the date, if you sort ascending based on the date, you have implemented a fee for, uh, because then the oldest date would be on top of the quant table later. It will show it to you in the coding. And if you want to set the flag here, you will sort the other way around. And another example would probably be the VF date. So based on this, you can implement a, a fee for or leave for strategy. So first expired, first out or last expired first out, but you can also combine those, those fields. So let's take, for example, here, the, the quant field. So if you have on sequence number one, uh, the W day to you and on sequence number two, the quantity, that means that SAP will take all quants with the same goods receipt date. And then within those quants, sort based on the quantity, for example, if you say, okay, I want to sort based ascending on the quantity for all quants which have the same goods receipt date, that means the quants with the smallest quantity will be suggested at first. But you can also do more comprehensive strategies 
for example, based on the open uh, warehouse task for a given storage bin. So one could imagine that you sort ascending based on the pick items. So that you prefer the bins which the which the with the lowest amount of open warehouse task, for example, in order to avoid traffic in a given area of the warehouse in a given ale or around a given bin. And so you can add here as many different sort fields as you want. I think a total of, of 30 is even possible. I'm not sure exactly. And then the standard will take the collection of possible source quants. And let's say the product is sitting on 10 different bins with 10 different goods receipt dates with 10 different quantities, etc. Standard will take this bunch of bins and then sort it based on the rules that you've defined here in the customizing, which is saved in table SCWMT334RR. And as I said before, we'll also check where this coding is being called. So if you have a problem there in standard, you want to debug it, I would suggest putting a breakpoint here in the subroutine src underscore bin underscore dead in this include here uh, you will have it here also and um, put a breakpoint here and here and this is the subroutine where the um, standard customizing is being read uh, you will see the details here this function module is reading data from the table that we mentioned before and then in this subroutine it is applying the sorting so you see here lt underscore t three three four rr this is holding the customizing that you defined before and this subroutine is changing ct underscore qmat so this is the table which is holding the possible source quants in my example that i explained before these 10 different bins with the 10 different goods receipt date and quantities so the result of the subroutine is that these source quants are sorted based on the customizing now it might happen that the options given in standard are not sufficient so most of you know that uh, usually what the business requests is not something with, that that uh, ewm can can cover um, can fully cover in standard so this uh, logic here gets even more powerful in case you use the body that I mentioned before and the body which is most commonly used here and I would be surprised if this one is not being implemented in the project that you are working on right now and the body is SEWM X underscore score underscore RWMS underscore data mine yeah you don't need to make notes I will put a link here uh, below the video uh, which points towards the blog on the website and you can copy paste all the technical details from there So let's have a look at the body and what it can do for us As I said, that's only one example out of many different bodies that you can use here But this one especially is being used for the determination and the sorting of the possible source quants And so here you see the enhancement spot just some more technical details don't want to get get deep into this here right now but I want to show you where it is being called here exactly in this include here we call it and you also see the stack here so in case you want to debug just uh, drop your breakpoint somewhere here now it's getting interesting I explain you how it works and you already see that there's a comprehensive list of uh, internal tables, structures and variables which is being hand over to the body. So this is the base data we can work with within the body in order to define our own logic. Yeah, so on a high level, what we are doing is we take, um, we are importing the QMAT table. You saw that before in the example screenshots from the standard customizing, you saw that this table here, this um, CTQMAT, so from internal perspective, the IT underscore QMAT, is already having the list of quants sorted based on the standard customizing. What we do here in the body is we take this as an input 
and as the output of the body, we, we give the standard et underscore qmat underscore cas. So this table basically holds the uh, list of quants and you can remove specific uh, records from the from the imported table and you can change the sorting. So as a result you have a, a list with the change so changed um, uh, sorting and probably you might have removed some records. Yeah, And in between, so from here to here, you can make use of all this data here, which is pretty comprehensive. Yeah. Um, first of all, you have this CTQ mat, which is already having a lot of um, stock relevant data. Yeah, you see the the the, the table type of the structure, uh, uh, the structure of the table is uh, uh, basically the aqua table. So you have all the stock attributes. You can work with all the stock attributes in, in order to define your own logic. And you also have the product master data of the product which is to be picked. And you can make use of that. And among some other data, you also have the storage type master data and the warehouse process type, uh, let's say master data or customizing data. Now you can you can take a combination of the, the, the stock data, the quants which are there, uh, the product master data, storage type customizing versus process type customizing. Yeah. So for example, you could combine it in a way that you say, uh, uh, for specific materials on specific days of the week, I want to do the sorting based on the quantity ascending and on other days of the week, I, for other materials, I do it descending. For instance, if you have specific days where specific product groups end up being picked in a very high volume and in a, in a very urgent situation. So in an urgent situation, you want to minimize the number of picks. So you would rather sort the quants descending so that the biggest quant is at the top, so that you avoid having multiple warehouse tasks against one warehouse request item. So you reduce the number of picks, but you might have uh, more partial quantities later in the warehouse. And on days which are not that busy, you might want to do the sorting ascending. Um, that means that the smallest quants are touched at first. So you're basically cleaning up the warehouse, removing the small partial quantities, but the picking would take a bit longer yeah, because the picker would have to pick at different bins. And at the end, at the end you free up bins. Um, uh, but if you have this spare time anyhow, you might want to make use of it. So you could include, you could even include a Z parameter here, which is being read in the body where you have a kind of switch. You switch between these two approaches like um, you might want to call it pick to speed or pick to clean. Yeah, pick to speed in terms of minimizing the number of saucepans. Pick to pick to clean in terms of um, maximizing the number of bins bins which are empty after picking. This is just one example. You you could you could also go here and not not sort based on the quantity, but in the CTQ mat, try to find a quant which has the exact same quantity which is requested uh, based on your warehouse request item. So you could take that one and remove all the other ones just to make sure you have an exact match based on the requested quantity and the quantity of the uh, source quant. Now this is just uh, some random examples, but you can imagine that the combination of product master data storage type, um, whereas process type, stock data, that you can come up with a whole lot of complex logic and algorithms here to determine the source bin. And at the end of all this, you just write your result into this et underscore qmat underscore cas. Uh, so from inside the body, it's the et, you export it um, out of the body. And here, uh, this uh, in the caller program, it just ending up as lt underscore q mod cas. You set this variable here. That means I changed the sorting. Please apply it. And then um, in the context where this body is called, this is being considered. And you will see as a result, a warehouse task being created based on your quant sorting. Um, I hope that was not too quick and too complex. For the... Feel free to uh, just jump back and listen to it again. But I think it's pretty straightforward what's happening. Yeah. One last thing um, for this body, if you just want to 
get inspired a little bit how you would uh, implement your own logic, feel free here to have a look at the example classes. So first of all, there is a fallback class implemented. So if you activate the, the body or if you have a that implementation and deactivate that one, you can decide whether the standard should call the fallback or not. And the fallback, which is uh, delivered with the software, the class ms.mfs. And in this class, for instance, I think I have another screenshot right here. Yeah, so in this example implementation for an MFS environment, there is, for instance, a logic which checks whether the ales are actually available. Yeah, so within the ales, you have the cranes and the cranes could run into a failure status or not working for any reason. And so the resources um, of those cranes do have a failure exception or something. And this example implementation shows you how to analyze the status of the resources. And based on this, remove all source bins from those ales where the resource is in a failure status so that they are not being considered as a source bin because if you you can actually take these source bins but uh, you might have to wait a long time until the resource is back up and running and so usually you they are sorted out in an, in an automated mfs environment uh, another example you can see here is this example implementation that is just ignoring source age use with open warehouse task. Uh, so that might also be an argument that you say, okay, if I have multiple different options to, to pick from for the same product, I would rather go for source age use, which does not already have an open task. Uh, because you might want to uh, avoid any kind of delays or any kind of traffic around uh, this bin or age use. But these example classes are pretty good uh, just for as an inspiration or just to get some ideas uh, how you implement the clean coding here. Now that, that should be it as a, as a last comment for this body. Based on this, we are already done with this video. Uh, I said that it's not going to be that long. Um, as a quick summary, perhaps um, for this topic, we were talking about the uh, rules that you can apply to determine a source bin or source HU in or uh, to pick from yeah so uh, at the end it would be the source quant for a warehouse task which is being created against the warehouse request item and i showed you that in the standard customizing you have these stock removal rules so a list of i don't know almost 20 to 30 different fields which is which is growing from release to release and you can sort based on this in the standard so you're sorting based on the attributes of the possible sort quants and apart from that you have the option to implement the body that i mentioned and the technical details will be in uh, a blog post which i link uh, just below the video where you can apply your own sorting to this list of quants i hope you could learn something feel free to use this video or the blog post for internal training so show it to your customer show it to your to your teams, give it to somebody who should implement this body based on the customer requirement. If that helps anybody, I'm very happy that I could uh, contribute something to this uh, communi community for SAP EWM, which is uh, pretty impressive in, in sharing um, information and helping each other. So this is my part here and uh, I hope you can benefit from it. Thanks and goodbye.